Thanks for joining us for tonight's Starlight Movie. On tomorrow night's Starlight Movie at Midnight, a washed-up ex-boxer makes an attempt to get back into the ring after being encouraged by his younger protege as Stacy Keach and Jeff Bridges star in Fat City. Tomorrow night at midnight on WPTT TV 22. Pittsburgh. Headline news, I'm David Goodnow. AT&T customers will ring in the new year with lower long-distance phone rates. Today, the government ordered the communications company to reduce its charges by 11%. John Holloman has details. The long-distance rate reduction will likely affect you, even if your phone company is not AT&T. We uh, project that the price of an average long-distance call will drop by 11% with no change in local telephone rates. The FCC has forced AT&T to lower its long-distance rates four times in the past three years, but the earlier long-distance cuts have been matched by increases in the local telephone company's charge for having a phone in your home or office. Those charges did not go up this time. It's still almost... Um 15 to 20 percent more expensive to um, have a telephone today, uh, counting local service, uh, in-state long distance, interstate long distance, uh, than it was at the time of the breakup. Uh, but the trend right now is for things to be going down. AT&T officials say residential customers will get more benefit from the rate cuts than businesses. Calls between 11 at night and 8 in the morning and on weekends before 5 o'clock on Sunday will come down 5.9 percent. Weekday rates for calls between 8 in the morning and 5 in the afternoon will be cut by 14 and one half percent. Calls between 5 p.m. and 11 p.m. will be cut by 9.3 percent. AT&T's long-distance competitors are expected to lower their rates to keep prices below the original long-distance company, even though it will hurt those companies financially. Certainly this is an industry that cannot afford to cut prices. Customers who spend more than $4.65 a month on long-distance will save under the new rates. But one result of the change may be to make it even more difficult for consumers to choose between the 22 different plans offered by the various long-distance companies. John Holloman, CNN, Washington. The world's largest oil company is pulling out of South Africa. Exxon says it has sold its two small affiliates there to an independent South African trust. The oil giant said events in the racially troubled country have not been good for business. President Reagan is striking back at costly European trade policies on American grain. Today he announced a 200% U.S. duty which will raise consumer prices for European gin, brandy, white wine and cheese. An American trade representative believes the import tax will send a clear message to the European community. The intent is to uh, uh, stop that trade in its tracks. In other words, we believe that 200% duties will, for all practical purposes, uh, terminate shipments of those products from the European community to the United States. A Georgia contractor said he's only trying to save Uncle Sam some money, but the military said he's welching on a contract and is suing him. Raylan Young reports. Eugene Burnett has been making and installing aluminum screens for more than 20 years. He signed a contract to replace window screens on about 200 buildings at the Marine Base in Quantico, Virginia for just over $16,000. But after visiting the base, he thought he could do the Marines a favor. Well, they didn't have a problem. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Burnett told the court it wasn't necessary to put outside screens on windows that already had inside screens. It would be tantamount to stealing for me to come back to Georgia and make a screen and take it back up there and take off on the inside a screen that was just as good as the one that I was putting on the outside. The Marine Corps didn't like that idea, and Burnett was given two more chances to execute the $16,000 contract. Each time he refused. The Marine Corps sued. I've been in the business 22 years, and I've never had anybody uh, tell me they won't do a job because it's... Uh, uh, they think a waste of money and it's really not at this point uh, the contractors decision whether it is or is not a good idea the job went to a second contractor and Burnett is legally bound to pay the extra money it cost the Marines to get the job done roughly twelve hundred dollars are you angry no sir I'm just disgusted the Marine Corps says it needs two screens on its windows to keep out pests like snakes and insects 
Burnett says nobody needs two screens on one window. He's written Georgia Senator Sam Nunn, urging him to investigate the matter. But for now, his effort to save taxpayer dollars results in his owing the government money. Braylon Young, CNN, Dawsonville, Georgia. Israel is denying charges that initiated the idea to divert profits from the U.S.-Iran arms sales to the Nicaraguan Contras. Today, the U.S. Justice Department officials said Attorney General Edwin Meese was told about the alleged Israeli proposal by Lieutenant Colonel Oliver North. The Soviets are saying yet to a televised exchange of New Year's greetings by President Reagan and Soviet leader Mikhail Gorbachev. The Kremlin said disputes between the superpowers make it impossible. The White House is expressing disappointment over the snub. The uh, president suggested that the United States and the Soviets this year continue the practice that was begun last year of exchanging messages on New Year's Day through the medium of television between the two leaders of the Soviet and the American people. The president was hopeful that this kind of exchange would help build a foundation of trust and cooperation essential for improved relations. Regrettably, the Soviet Union has declined our offer to exchange greetings. Last New Year's, U.S. TV networks broadcast an address by Gorbachev and an address from Mr. Reagan to the Soviet people was broadcast at the beginning of the Soviet TV's evening news program. Soviet emigres returned home of after, over the weekend are examples of immigrants who failed to adjust to life in the United States. Tim Ullinger reports the transition from Soviet to American culture is not an easy one. 55 Soviet emigres gave up on their new life in America Sunday and went back to Moscow. Because I miss my home and my people. The returning emigres were just a tiny percentage of the 150,000 Soviet emigres who live in America. But their move sheds light on just how difficult it is for Soviets to assimilate in American society. I think it would be to get used to the American way to live, style. And I, I think they're not used to the language is a big, The language is the biggest problem so far for people who just immigrated. It changed life, changed position, everything different. The Brighton Beach section of Brooklyn is the largest community of emigres in the country. The Soviet immigrants here in Brighton Beach say they face the same problems other immigrants to America have faced. They say the big difference is they must learn to deal with the openness, unpredictability, and freedom of American society. Mikhail Galperin is a Soviet immigrant and psychologist. In the Soviet Union, so many of the things are determined uh, for you, uh, preordained by the government, starting from the courses kids take in college and high school to uh, the place of residence. Galperin says older Russian immigrants find the transition the hardest, but he says Soviet immigrant children also have problems because American children think of them only as Soviets. So, for example, during, uh, let's say, the boycott of the um, Los Angeles Olympics or during the downing of the Korean air, air flight um, in 007, uh, the kids in, in American high schools often taunted Russian kids, uh, uh, identifying them with the Soviet government. But despite the problems, Galperin says the great majority of his fellow emigres are very happy. Tim Ullinger, CNN, New York. We'll be back. episode of All in the Family. Come on, don't be afraid. You're only going to be asking people for a job. Oh, I ain't afraid of the asking. I'm afraid of the answer. <laughs> you got to think positive. George, you don't know it yet, but I just found someone to help in the cleaning store. Who? You. You can come and work for us. Help me, Lord. <laughs> All in the Family, tomorrow night at 7.30 on WPTT-TV 22. Nice car, huh? I used the system, and it worked. Want to know how? I paid for my education with guaranteed student loans. And that loan money opened the door to a great job and a whole lot of other opportunities for me. Then I paid the loan back, and that good credit helped me get my dream car. See? The system worked for me. If you think you could beat the system by not paying back your student loan, think again. They'll catch up with you sooner or later, either through your tax refund or a bad credit report. And 
you won't get to enjoy anything. Brought to you by the Pennsylvania Higher Education. For information, call 1-800-692-7392. The most beautiful girl in the world and her deepest desire to conquer the Sahara. Hotter than passion. More exotic than dreams. Waiting for adventure. A broadcast premiere. Brooke Shields, Sahara. Thursday night at 8 on WPTT TV 22. Residents of New York's Howard Beach community continue to debate over an alleged racial attack earlier this month. Richard Roth said for now, the tension resulting from the white-on-black assault there remains high. Extra police, half of them undercover, were on duty in Howard Beach, Queens, hours after a judge dropped murder and assault charges against three white youths charged in an attack on blacks. Police stood guard outside the pizza parlor where the attack began, but no incidents were reported. It's been quiet, normal neighborhood. I don't expect anything to happen. Most area residents are pleased that the charges were reduced against the three teenagers. I don't see any reason to hold them on murder charges because they did not hit the guy, you know? If they want to be brought up on assault charges, that's another case. Residents remain furious, though, with the heavy press coverage of the case. Give it a rest for crying out loud. Tensions remain high following the dismissal of the murder charges, with black activists claiming a cover-up. They want the driver of the car that struck 23-year-old Michael Griffith to be arrested for murder. The police say there was no proof the driver knowingly ran down Griffith. But the lawyers for assault victim Cedric Sanford maintain he won't agree to testify unless the driver of the car is arrested. It was the lack of Sanford's testimony that caused the charges against the three white youths to be reduced to reckless endangerment. The mayor of New York leads the call for the relaxation witness to come forward. I think it's a great disservice to civil rights. I think it's a great disservice to the city of New York. I think it's a great disservice to the law. The police department tried to make peace in the assault zone. It called a dialogue session for black and white students from the local high school. Well, we all opened up to the feelings about how we felt about blacks and whites and all. But I believe all students can talk with each other because they relate to each other, they got the same problems. And I think we can clear this up, but it's the me that keeps pushing it. Though the people of Howard Beach would like the glare of publicity surrounding this case to go away, the district attorney vows to find any evidence that would lead to a reinstatement of murder indictments by a grand jury. Richard Roth, CNN, New York. Cleanup crews are working to right a number of Conrail tanker cars that jumped the tracks in Conowingo, Maryland. One of the 16 cars broke open and spilled several thousand gallons of lye into the Susquehanna River when it derailed last night. Nearby residents were evacuated but were permitted to go home later today. Patients undergoing radiation and chemotherapy treatments are facing a life-threatening situation. Charles Feldman reports there is a dangerous shortage of blood platelets in many parts of the United States. What's wrong with this picture? The answer is that only one of four available stations at this blood center is occupied by someone giving blood. Near empty rooms like this all across America have led to a life-threatening problem. There seems to be a nationwide shortage for platelet products. Platelets are given to cancer and leukemia patients and candidates for bone marrow transplant. Platelets are small cells within our blood that help it clot to stop bleeding in our body's vessels. The chemical and radiation therapies given cancer patients destroy not only cancer cells, but also the much-needed blood platelets, opening up the patient to the dangers of hemorrhage. That is why such patients must get platelet supplements. While some supplies of whole blood are running low, too, the platelet shortage is particularly acute. That's because, for the first time, the Food and Drug Administration only allows platelets to be stored for five days instead of seven, as had previously been the case. Despite repeated appeals, many people are afraid to give blood for fear of getting AIDS or other diseases. A groundless fear, says the medical director of the Greater New York Blood Program. Giving blood is perfectly safe for the donor. Every donor is screened to be sure that he or she is in good health. All of the equipment used for the donor is sterile. It's used only for the donor. There is absolutely nothing you can get from giving blood except a good feeling. If you are thinking about giving blood but haven't made up your mind yet, consider this. Some experts say that unless more blood platelets become available very soon, 
people, some children undergoing cancer treatment, will certainly die. Charles Feldman, CNN, New York. The Sunshine State is overflowing with tourists this holiday week. Florida's biggest attractions, including Walt Disney World and Busch Gardens, had to turn away the crowds today. Parking lots were packed. Traffic was backed up for miles around the Magic Kingdom. Consumer Reports magazine celebrating its golden anniversary. Jeannie Most takes a look at some of the gizmos and gadgets the periodical has reviewed over the years. For half a century, Consumers Union has been giving products a licking in hopes of picking the best ones. The organization first published its results in 1936. That issue of Consumer Reports featured articles on Alka-Seltzer, cereal, and stockings. Fifty years later, patios are still in the running, but much of what the Consumers Union tests nowadays is high-tech stuff. The sound quality of stereo TVs, for instance. Consumers Union uses eight microphones and computer analysis to rate each set. In honor of the organization's 50th anniversary, the Cooper Hewitt Museum in New York has put on an exhibition entitled Milestones, 50 Years of Goods and Services. And in a consumer society like ours, progress can be measured by the degree of softness obtained by a fabric softener or the strength of a tissue. We managed to introduce a machine that uh, sneezes onto the tissue and therefore can tell you how tissues will react to sneezes. We have a buttocks machine and the buttocks machine sits down on each mattress thousands and thousands of tons. You will find all of these testing gizmos at Consumers Union headquarters in an old factory building a half hour's drive from New York. Products are tested for how long they last, how well they work, and how safe they are. We're measuring the bottom of the child to see how far it's come off the seat. Consumers Union buys all the products it tests at stores, paying retail prices that accept no freebies from manufacturers. In walking this hall, employees put floor finishings to the test. Some items never make it big. Brazil, you know, stick on, glue on. <laughs> stick on, glue on, yeah, glue, glue on, yes, you know, so without strapless. Fifteen years ago, textile engineer Andre Lucas gave the Blue Met Bra this review. The consumer should consider the fact that removal may be painful. A lot of what Consumers Union says is painful to manufacturers whose goods can't stand the heat. Ginimo, CNN, New York. Stay tuned. Headline Sports is next. Freedom is more than just a word. Freedom's responsibility, that's what it is. It means free of you, okay? Free of why don't you, why can't you, why aren't you? Mayor Winningham finds her freedom in the life of a carnival. I was mate! I have mates! Don't you care? I'm your daughter! Dad and I will sit on me and he'd tear this place apart! And where is he? Let me, why isn't he here? Let me, this is your message. Freedom, Wednesday night at 8 on WPTT TV 22. Doctor says you'll be up and around in no time. Everything's going to be just fine. In our country, physical illness gets the most advanced medical treatment there is. Yet a disease more widespread than cancer, lung, and heart disease combined goes virtually untreated. Why don't you just get up and pull yourself together? Snap out. Everybody gets depressed. The disease is mental illness. A disease so confusing, its symptoms are often misread and misunderstood. There's nothing wrong with him. All he needs is a good swift kick in the pants. Enough is enough. So its victims wind up neglected, isolated. Why don't you talk to us? What is wrong? There is nothing more I can do for you. But mental illness is a medical illness. And like other medical illnesses, it can be treated. Once you learn to recognize the warning signs, learn to see the sickness. Learning is the key to healing. For an informative booklet, call the American Mental Health Fund. Captain's Log, Stardate 2949.9. Due to an accident in space, I have been relieved of duty, awaiting the verdict of a general court-martial. Computers don't lie. Are you suggesting that I did? Yeah. Sure. I'm thinking of the service. I won't have it smeared. By what? You're about to lop off the captain's professional head, and you're sitting here playing chess with a computer. Star Trek, tomorrow night at 6 on WPTT TV 22.
Tom West with Headline Sports. Ray Perkins is on his way back to the pros after his meeting with Tampa Bay owner Hugh Culverhouse Tuesday morning. CNN learned from several sources that the University of Alabama football coach has decided to fill the Bucks vacancy as well as become the team's general manager and vice president of operations. In four years at Alabama, after leaving the head coaching job with the Giants, Perkins had a 32-15-1 record, including capturing this year's Sun Bowl on Christmas Day. He has a news conference scheduled for Wednesday morning. On the gridiron Tuesday night, UCLA won its fifth straight postseason game, beating Brigham Young 31-10 in the Freedom Bowl in Anaheim. What a performance by Gaston Green. Just a junior, he scored three touchdowns while rushing for a major college bowl record 266 yards. At the Holiday Bowl in San Diego, Iowa staged a thrilling comeback. Rob Houtland's 41-yard field goal as time ran out beat San Diego State 39-38. A surprise from the college round ball ranks, 12th-ranked Kentucky playing on the same Louisville floor where it crushed the Cardinals last weekend, was stunned in its Southeastern Conference opener against Georgia. Tony Mack scored 24, leading the Bulldogs over the Wildcats 69-65. In top 10 action, North Carolina won the Dallas Morning News Classic in overtime. Purdue won the consolation game. Syracuse smashed Boston University. Georgetown won by 14. Kansas won a consolation game at the Rainbow Classic. In the NBA, the Knicks made it four wins in a row. Indiana clubbed Cleveland. Milwaukee down Detroit. It was Golden State edging Chicago. San Antonio stopped Utah. It's the 76ers downing Denver. The Rockets over the Clippers. Portland beat Phoenix. And Boston came back to beat Seattle. Tom West, Headline Sports. This is Sandy Kenyon with the Hollywood Minute. Michael J. Fox is being urged to direct a movie, and the urging is coming from someone who knows what he's talking about. Steven Spielberg saw a four-minute video short directed by Fox on a recent David Letterman special and called Fox the next day. CBS is planning to broadcast an episode of Magnum P.I. in black and white. The monochrome episode in the style of Dashiell Hammett's detective fiction will air on January 14th, and all series regulars will play dual roles. This is Sandy Kenyon with the Hollywood Minute. In the headlines, the government has told AT&T to cut its long-distance rate 11 percent on New Year's Day. The Justice Department says it has been unable to confirm Oliver North's claim that an Israeli official first proposed funneling Iran arms sales profits to the Nicaraguan rebels. And there are record crowds and traffic jams at Disney World and across Central Florida as vacationers escape cold weather and celebrate the holidays. With the top stories, I'm Don Baer. Stay tuned. The news continues. That's a lie. I like it. Yeah, you can pick them up. Richard Reeves, author and syndicated columnist. Harry Truman said, the only thing new in the world is the history you don't know. That's why American Heritage is my favorite magazine. Look here, for instance. Here's an article on how air conditioning changed everything. And here's one about the secret FDR tapes, what it was like to be sick 100 years ago. And America's boldest counterfeiter who drew $50 bills by hand American heritage is the story of America. Superbly printed and handsomely bound, it reminds us of our past and helps us understand the present. I've written for American heritage. I subscribe to it. I recommend it. It's a great national resource. Get a full year of American heritage. Six big issues for just $18. Call now and get this 800-page American heritage family dictionary free. Call 1-800-533-1400. In dollars and cents, deregulation comes to cable TV on Thursday, and it could change what you see on cable TV and what you pay. Fritz Mayer reports. 
According to a survey recently published by multi-channel news, many cable systems will substantially raise their rates next year. Of 282 systems surveyed, 75% intend to boost prices for basic cable service, with the average jump set at about 18%. Reactions from some random viewers were predictably so. negative. Uh, I think it's too expensive as it is. I'm not going to pay more than what I'm paying now. I use cable to avoid paying movie fees and to enjoy it. If it raises up that high that the movie becomes economically feasible, who needs cable? Competition from home VCRs has already slowed the growth of cable, and the prospect of price increases has been greeted with caution from some in the industry. Others, however, feel the hikes will help in the long run. In effect, the cable operator will have a little bit more money to spend on good programming, which he will do. To offset consumer reaction to cost hikes, cable companies are considering adding channels to basic service and lowering the price of pay services such as HBO and Showtime. Fritz Mayer, CNN, New York. In tomorrow's forecast, rains on tap for the northern half of the Pacific coast. Snow is expected over northern Minnesota. Snow mixed with rain is forecast for southeastern New England. Highs will be in the 20s and 30s across the Great Lakes, the Northern Plains, and the Rockies. Temperatures will top 70 degrees over South Florida. Extreme high and low tides are bringing curious Californians to the beach. It seems the oceans are currently under the influence of the planets. Greg Lefebvre explains. This was four years ago. High tides and high seas whipping the west coast, sending homes crashing into the sea. This year, the high winds are not around, but the high tides are, some nearly two feet over normal. In areas like the coastal plains south of Los Angeles, the few feet can make a difference. Sandbags shore up portions of Pacific Coast Highway. Home and business owners are preparing in case the weather changes. So far, all it's meant is good surf. So you'll be out again tomorrow to surf? Oh yeah, definitely, yeah. The remarkable tides come from a remarkable planetary event. The sun, moon, and earth are in alignment. This means a stronger gravitational pull at each tide, pulling the water up higher. Also, the moon's orbit is closer than usual, just 221,000 miles away. And while it's high tide in one part of the world, the tides are becoming extremely low in other parts. Welcome to the ocean floor. These dramatic low tides have revealed portions of the ocean bottom that have not been revealed in 18 years. The ebb tides have brought a flood of curious beachcombers. That's a lie! about that big. Jesse Warner drew pictures. All sorts of sea urchins. Um, I found some fossils somewhere up on fossils? the rock. Yeah. Most tidal areas are protected by law. Look, but don't take. You look and enjoy the animals, but uh, we prefer that you leave them at peace. They are fairly fragile animals. The same tidal extremes occur around the world this week. So far, there's been no major damage to the U.S. coastline. Seaside communities hope the fairly calm weather holds for another few days when the planets will move out of their alignment and tides return to normal. Greg Lefebvre, CNN, Monterra, California. That's our report. Thank you for joining us. I'm David Goodnow. Around the world in 30 minutes, this is Headline News. And now Channel 22 in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania comes to the end of another telecasting day. Channel 22 is owned and operated by CRI Incorporated and telecast from studios and offices at 500 Seco Road in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. With a transmitter located at 800 Hawkeye Drive Extension and operating on a station to transmitter link with the call sign WDD 625. This is George Hart speaking for the staff of Channel 22, wishing you a pleasant good night and good morning.